Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great. In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you how to analyze Likert scale using descriptive and inferential statistics and uh, interpret the results. So we have this uh, questionnaire that is on learning strategies inventory that is adapted uh, from Oxford and we need to analyze it. So before analyzing this survey, we need to have a code book like this. So I need to code the items as you can see uh one or zero for no and one for yes for gender we have one for female two for male age is a continuous variable sometimes it has categories so we can code them uh, respectively and we always assign the lower values to the lower uh, categories because a species or excel just understand understands numbers not a statement like this so anyways once we do the coding for we code also the Likert scale items from one to five, and we do this from uh, strongly disagree uh, coded as one, that is the lower value, and strongly agree coded as five, that is the highest value. Then once we code the survey, we can uh, code it also on Google Forms or Excel or Microsoft Forms or any uh, platform that we use to get the data. I'm going to attach the video on how to code the questionnaire on uh, Google Forms or X in general or CSV file very quickly. So once we code the questionnaire, the next step is code the data, of course, and then uh, we can either analyze it using Excel. In that case, we are just going to use certain formulas or we can use it, uh, we can just analyze it using spaces. And that's what I'm going to show you. So to analyze it using spaces, we can just first go to file import data excel and we find the file and we import the data once we import it we will have two views we have the data view and the variable view and for the uh, variable view uh, we need to add those items as you can see one strongly disagree two disagree three and certain for example four agree and five strongly agree so we need to do this for all the items and once we finish we simply uh, add the code as you can see and the label so coding is like a double process so we do it uh, multiple times then once we finish the coding we can do the descriptive statistics and to do descriptive statistics uh, we have like uh, this function of analyze and then descriptive statistics and then we can choose either frequencies or descriptives so I prefer to choose frequencies because it's more advanced so we can go to frequencies and then I can move the items. So here I can uh, move item one, item two, item three, etc. Till I finish. I want just to analyze these uh, five items. So I can just move them to the variable uh, view. So I keep just con uh, clicking control and then select uh, each item separately. Then I go to statistics. And then I can choose, uh, suppose that I want the mean. Uh, like the average and I want more for instance the mode and sometimes the median these are for uh, descriptive statistics and most specifically central tendency measures and for dispersion measures in descriptive statistics we have standard deviation we can choose the range sometimes we can choose the minimum maximum etc and we have also kertosis and sconis with regard to the normality of the data. So to tell you the truth, uh, mostly Likert scale data is not normally distributed. So you can expect to use uh, non-parametric tests as inferential statistics. So once we finish, I can click continue and then click OK and wait for the output. So this is the table that contains the Likert scale items and we have the mean, median, mode, standard deviation range. Now, how can we go about the interpretation of this result? So as you can see, the mean here ranges from 3.67 to uh, 2.96. So what do, do those values mean? You remember the coding? So we coded one as strongly disagree and five as strongly agree. This means that the higher the mean score, the more agreement uh, is expressed with each uh, statement, for instance. But we can rank, the, uh, rank these statements, for instance. We can say that the first statement is uh, that has received the higher uh, rate of agreement, mostly uncertainty. So we have this statement of two. I use no English words in a sentence, so I can remember them. So most respondents do this. 
etc. So I can just rank these uh, items based on the mean score. And the higher the mean score, the more agreement that is expressed with each Lagrange scale uh, item. Then we have the median, that is the midpoint value. We have the mode, that is the most frequent value. So here five, this means that most respondents strongly agree. And then we have five again, most respondents strongly agree, as you can see. The standard deviation just tells us how the respondents differ in terms of the uh, their attitudes with regard to certain uh, issues. So the higher, again, the standard deviation, the more heterogeneous the sample is. And the lower the standard deviation, the the more homogeneous the sample is in terms of uh, attitude or agreement or disagreement, etc. Okay, so it, it, we so we use just both the mean, especially and the standard deviation, the mean for central tendency measure and standard deviation for uh, dispersion measure when it comes to descriptive statistics. So once we finish descriptive descriptive statistics, we can go for inferential statistics. So why do we use inferential statistics? We simply use inferential statistics to generalize the results from the sample that we have to the whole population, uh, given the p-value that is below 0.05 or 0.01 or 0.001. So it depends on the threshold level that is determined. So we have different uh, uh, inferential statistics. We have the parametric and non-parametric tests. For the parametric tests, we can go for the independent sample t-test, let's say, to compare uh, gender, male and female respondents along with the strategies that they use, like who use this strategy, for example, uh, more, uh, male or female, uh, etc. So this, this is called the independent sample t-test. Again, to do this, we can just go to analyze and then we go to compare means and we go to independent samples t-test. And then we put gender as the grouping variable and we assign, uh, so again, the coding is always important. So one for group one and two for group two and click continue. And I put, for example, this statement, like I, re I remember new word uh, or new English word by making uh, links, for instance. Uh, and then I click uh, OK. I just want to see this statement. You can choose all the items together. Sometimes you can combine items together. That's yet another strategy that you can use. So it mainly depends on your research questions, your research objectives, and your research hypotheses. So again, we can click OK and wait for the output. Here it is. So again, we have the descriptive stats within the inferential stats at the same time. Uh, we have female, we have the N that refers to the sample size. So we have 60 female respondents and uh, 42 male respondents. The mean score here differs from male to female with regard to the re remembering an English word by making a mental image. Uh, so here the mean score of female uh, respondents is higher than that of male. Therefore, uh, female respondents agree with this statement more than uh, male respondents do. And standard deviation, you can see just the difference in terms of uh, or the divergence in terms of expressing the attitudes. And then let's look at the uh, whether this this difference is uh, by chance or is statistically significant. This means that we can generalize this finding from the sample to the whole population. Is this really scientifically true? Is there really a scientific uh, difference between uh, male and female with regard to making mental picture? I don't think so. Maybe if you are a psychologist, you may have more arguments with regard to this. So anyways, so we have seek to tailed this refers to the p-value. You, you remember, if the p-value is below 0.05, this means that there is a statistically significant difference. If it's above 0.05, this means that there is no statistically significant difference. And we, usually we have two seek uh, two tailed We have equal variances assumed and equal variances not assumed. So we can go for both of them. As you can see, the p-values for both are not statistically significant since the are below point, uh, so they are not below, they are above 0.05. This means that uh, we cannot be sure 95% that the, this difference that exists between male and female respondents with regard to remember new word uh, by making me mental picture is statistically significant. And therefore, we reject the null hypothesis, or not reject, rather, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that assumes that there is a statistically significant uh, difference between male and female 
respondents, okay? Because we have the null hypothesis that assumes that there is no statistically significant difference. So we either reject it at the, uh, in favor of the alternative hypothesis or we fail to reject it. Okay, so we don't say support or not support, we fail. We say just reject or fail to reject, okay? So I did this without testing the normality because I know that the normality is not that uh, accurate because we are dealing with social science and attitudes are divergent from uh, one person to another. Uh, but to avoid this issue, whether to use parametric or non-parametric tests, I can just use uh, sensitivity analysis by using both uh, parametric and non-parametric tests like the independent sample C test and the man with new U test. So to use the man with me again, you go to analyze and you go to non-parametric tests and you go to independent samples uh, T test or man with new test and we go to gender and move it to groups and this uh, statement and we put it here but nominal fields cannot be placed in the list so what we need to do here is just change the uh, measurement level because as you know we have ordinal interval ratio and uh, nominal uh, uh, scales or rather measurement levels to do this we can just go back to spaces look for four and go for the measurement level from nominal we can change it to scale because some stu students or researchers ask me why we have those uh, let's say measures are nominal or scale or ordinal so just forget about what you are reading about Likert scale as being ordinal that depends truly on your research objective objectives and your research questions and what you actually want to do with it you can consider it nominal ordinal interval whatever you want depending on the analysis that you want to run so once we change it because species is another story so species has different uh, criteria let's say criteria so to speak okay so anyways we can just go to uh, analyze uh, then non-parametric tests, independent samples t test, and uh, so I'll just go back to this. So we have independent samples t test, we have non-parametric, independent. So I move this, okay. Uh, for example, so I changed two. So for the sake of illustration, I can just move uh, this statement number three rather, not two to this box just for the sake of illustration so you know now the how you can do it and I click run again I can wait for the output so this is the uh, non-parametric test you see the sig value is below or rather is above 0 0.05 it's 26 percent so we the decision is to retain the null hypothesis and uh, although there is difference maybe not noticeable difference between male and female in favor of female respondents still this difference is not statistically significant so we cannot generalize it to the whole population so this is just one uh, inferential statistic test you can run for instance the chi-square test there are videos on how to do that the ANOVA test there are videos on how to do that uh, the regression tests and uh, there are some videos on how to do that I can attach the links to each video separately in the description box. If you have questions or remarks, do not hesitate to post them below or contact me via one of my social media platforms. Till then, see you in another tutorial. Bye for now.